This is the Less Insurance Dependence Podcast Show with my good friend Gary Takas and myself, Narain Arul Raja. We appreciate your listenership, your time, and most of all, we appreciate your intention to reduce insurance dependence in your practice. Our goal is to provide information that will help you successfully reduce insurance dependence and convert your practice into a thriving and profitable dental practice that provides you with personal, professional, and financial satisfaction. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Less Insurance Dependence Podcast, the official podcast of the Reducing Insurance Dependence Academy, www.rid.academy. Membership to the Academy is a gift from Gary and I in appreciation for your listenership. Go to rid.academy and don't forget to register. By registering, you will have access to all of our resources and a free pass to all of our, including our annual summit. I am Narain, your co-host. Today's podcast is titled, Is Dentistry a Profession or an Industry? A great conversation we're going to have today. Before we get into today's topic, I have a quick announcement to make. We have an event with Ali Oramshian. This is happening in May, uh, specifically on May 8th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And the topic is biggest mistakes dentists make and how to avoid them. Um, you know, Gary is going to be talking about practice management, practice ownership. I'm going to be talking about marketing mistakes. And of course, Ali is an expert when it comes to HR and legal matters. So looking forward to this awesome learning event, two hours of CE. Any comments, Gary? Yeah, I'm excited about that event. Of course, it's a live event. Uh, Ali Aramchian has been a long time friend of mine. and He is my go-to resource when it comes to everything related to HR um, and uh, employment law. And uh, that is certainly not an area where you want to step in the mud. <laughs> in fact, very dangerous uh, to step in the mud when it comes to uh, HR uh, decisions. Uh, so as Naren indicated, the title of the event is Biggest Mistakes Dentists Make, How to Avoid Them. I'll be talking about practice management uh, mistakes. Uh, Naren will be talking about marketing mistakes, how to avoid those. And Ali will be talking about the HR um, uh, minefield and how to avoid stepping on any mines when it comes to HR. Uh, we have um, enlisted a lot of questions from you all, from listeners, and we have a great um, uh uh, actually uh, a selection of questions uh, that will fall into each one of those three areas. So these are actual questions from uh, dentists all over the country uh, and it's going to be a really cool format. So uh, come to a first time we've done uh, something like this and first time we've done something like this with, with uh, Ali. Um, so mark your calendar, uh, May 8th, uh, 7 PM Eastern time, do the tra time translation for you. Uh, that's uh, 6 p.m. Central Time, uh, 5 p.m. Mountain Time, and 4 p.m. Pacific Time. Uh, there's no cost. We're doing it as a courtesy to you in, in appreciation for your listenership, but you do have to register. Uh, Naren, what's the link for them to register? It's um, thrivingdentist.com slash webinar. Thrivingdentist.com slash webinar. Great. Hey, can't wait to see you there. Thank you so much, Gary. Let's jump into today's topic. And the topic is, is dentistry a profession or an industry? So uh, it is an awesome topic. And uh, I think, Gary, it's both. And uh, the, I'll tell you why I think that way. And I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, I think uh, the last time I checked, it was a $130 billion industry, one of the larger industries within healthcare. Healthcare as a whole in the US is a $4 trillion industry. Um, and of course, you know, most of us uh, need a dentist uh, for the rest of our lives, right? Hopefully the ones who care about health and we, we go to the dentist religiously and, you know, we get our kids to brush their teeth and go to the dentist religiously and it becomes part of something we do, you know, as part of healthy living. Um, so I think in that sense, it is an industry. It is like, you know, stable. On the other hand, uh, it is also a profession, right? Uh, you know, they can't become a dentist. You have to, you know ace your you know university and then get into dental school which is not easy and you have to ace that and then you have to work for somebody else learn the craft continue with the ce and the ongoing education so it's a profession just like any other 
profession, any other healthcare profession, you know, uh, you know, it is it is a profession that takes a lot of time and effort, not just up front, but also on an ongoing basis to to be allowed or to be, you know, to get the credentials to practice dentistry. So what's your take, Gary? Well, let me give you the backstory to uh, why I selected this topic for this Less Insurance Dependence podcast. Um, Naren and I are both involved in a number of uh, large uh, dentist Facebook groups. Um, and, you know, Facebook has, has become a, a very a useful forum, or at least the groups have become a useful forum uh, for debate and discussion, you know, within our, our profession. Um, and I love the way that Facebook um, requires you to be transparent. You know, um, you have to be who you are. You have to give your name, you know, your actual name and, um, you have to uh, make comments, you know, from your genuine self. You can't be hide behind a screen name. Um, and so because of that, I, I think the group, um, the, the dental groups can be a very useful place to um, uh, debate and bounce around different topics. And Nair and I are both involved in a, in a number of those. Recently, um, I got involved in a, in a wonderful discussion in a particular Facebook group uh, about uh, is dentistry a profession or an industry? <clears throat> and uh, I think the words that we use are important. Uh, I think they're very important. They kind of, uh, they allow us to create a mindset and create a perspective. Um, and we may agree to disagree on this one, Darren, because I have a different opinion. I okay. absolutely believe that dentistry is a profession, not an industry. Um and uh, it was interesting because uh, in this particular thread, you know, on on this large Facebook group, uh, very large Facebook group, over over forty five thousand members, um, and in this particular group, um, there were mixed uh, opinions about it. Some people said, "Who cares? You know, it doesn't matter what it is. It's, it's business." <laughs> and I, you know, I guess at some level, you know, that's it. But I do believe that the words uh, that we use uh, are are very important. For example. Um, I like to think of the people we work with as a team, as opposed to staff. Um, I like to jokingly say a uh, staff is an infection. Uh, wait a minute, you spell that differently. <laughs> staff <laughs> is an infection or it's a stick, you know, the shepherds <laughs> carry. <laughs> uh, and team just implies something completely different. And I'll, I'll give you a really fundamental difference of words, Naren. Um you know, think about some of the things we ask our patients to do in, in, in the dental office. Um, we can ask them to rinse or we, we can ask them to spit. Which word would we prefer to use? Uh, <laughs> I think gonna, rinse, we're going to ask them to rinse. So yes. I, I think the words that we use are very important. Um, and I think industry um, implies that you know, it's this massive uh, enterprise. Uh, we're simply a grain of sand on the beach, you know, involved in this massive industry. You know, I'll, I'll give you a good example of where the word industry, I think, accurately describes the business. The auto manufacturing industry. That's an industry. Mm -hmm. um, would you agree, Naren? I would agree. Yeah, the auto manufacturing industry. That's an, those are big factories. There's thousands of people that work inside of them. And uh, now certainly some of the people that work in, in the auto manufacturing industry are absolutely professionals. Absolutely. Um, but there used to be a lot more professionals in the auto manufacturing industry. Um, a lot of things used to be done by hand. Uh, for example, welding was something that, uh, if we go back in time, was was done in hand. And I believe that welders are absolute professionals, you know, in terms of, right. of what they do. Today, most of those jobs have been taken over by what? Uh, technology, I mean, robots and all kinds machines, of- Machines, robots. Uh, yeah, machines, yeah. They've been taken over by, by, by machines. Yeah. Um, another term that the uh, insurance industry, and I'm using that term specifically, I think insurance is absolutely an industry. <laughs> it is, it is, uh, you know, it is the definition uh, of industry. A term that they have uh, kind of foisted upon us is provider. Mm. Provider. Yeah, you're not a doctor anymore. You're a provider. No, no, not a doctor, not a doctor. Uh, you're yeah. a provider. 
you know, like yeah. many other providers, you're just one of many. You're just and you're replaceable. And, and Best stylist you know, is a provider, you know. Yeah, you're uh, a provider. You know, yeah, provider. Yeah. You know, okay. and I'd like to to suggest uh, that there's a difference uh, uh, between you know being a caregiver and a doctor than being a provider. Yeah. Right. Um, so I want you to think about this for a minute. And, and again, I think this is more than just an academic debate, uh, because as as I've over 44 years now been involved in, in our wonderful profession, I'm going to keep using that word profession. Um, as I've been involved for over 44 years in this wonderful profession, uh, I noticed that there are different styles of practice. There are many different styles of practice. Now, Aaron, you've had experience with a lot of practices, and certainly within your client base at Equa. Uh, you have clients all over the the all over the the North America, uh, primarily in the U.S. Is that correct? That is correct. That is correct. Uh, and you have lots of different styles of practices, um, and I think you've noticed some, some differences as you're in your work with them. I think you've noticed some differences. That be right. accurate. That is accurate, Gary. But I've noticed that if we describe it kind of simply, think of a spectrum. Think of a a linear you know, a line, a horizontal line uh, in front of us. And on one side, uh, we have, as a style of practice, a transactional practice. And right. on the other side, we have a relationship-driven practice. Correct. Now, the truth is, I don't think any, pract any practice is purely one or the other. Mm -hmm. it, it lies somewhere in between you know, what would a purely transactional practice look like? Purely transactional. Well, people just walk in, have some provider do the care, and then they leave. <laughs> right. Well, right. Uh, I don't believe that any practice really, you know, succumbs to that level, you know, entirely. Um, and relationship driven, you know, clearly on the other side um, of the spectrum uh, would imply that that practice, you know, we 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 know our patients, we know their names, we know their spouse's name, we know their kids' name, we know their hobbies, we know their interests, we know their dental story, we know their broader healthcare situation in terms of what their overall health is. That would define more like relationship driven. So, right. as an exercise, as you're listening to this, doctors, I would like you to think about draw that line, draw that horizontal line, and put a mark where you think you are where you think you are. are you right in the middle you know are you you know, partly transactional and partly relationship driven where are you where are you are you much more transactional based or are you much more relationship driven where are you in that spectrum and where would you like to be so put where you think you are this is very subjective i wish i could be really objective i wish there was a way to measure this Naren. Right. Um, and there is i'm going to i'm going to show you a, a partial way to measure it uh there is a way um but put a mark where you are on that spectrum from being transactional and transactional would be you're an industry to right. being relationship driven. You're a profession. And where are you in that? And where would you like to be? Ideally, where would you like to be? If the world was perfect. Where would you place yourself? And right. then maybe answer the question, what would you have to do to get there? What would you have to do to get there? Now, let me, connect some dots and, and relate it to the topic of this podcast. If all of your patients come to you, and I'm, I'm deliberately using an extreme, if all of your patients come to you because they find you on the insurance company website, where are you more likely to be on that spectrum? Where do you think, Darren? Uh, Transactional trans versus relation. If they, trans they come trans to you because they looked you up. Yeah, transactional, I get it. I mean, I think this is what the insurance companies want. Like you correctly pointed out, they want you to be a provider. They wanted you to be an industry and it's transactional, right? In industry, it's you're transactional. Just one of you're not unique. You're just yeah, all exactly. dentists are the same, right? Right? Yeah, exactly. Well, how do, how, do, how do insurance companies foster the idea of all, all dentists being the same? Well, all the dentists on the network charge the same thing. Yeah, exactly. They charge the, the silly fee that they set for you. Yeah, you know, exactly. You're all the same. So they are, are by virtue of their operations, making you an industry. Right. Because they're setting your fee and they're assuming that a crown is a crown is a crown is a crown is a crown. And I think all of us listening to this know differently. 100%. No differently. Now, 100%. if you get all of your patients, 100% of your patients by patient referral, 
where would you likely be in that spectrum? Um, if you, I mean, it's going to be relational, right? It's going You're to be relational because yeah, someone thought highly enough of of how they were taking care of your practice to tell someone they cared about about your yeah. practice. Exactly. Now, I would also suggest that another way to look at that is uh, you can use Google as a way for you to craft a more relationship-driven practice, because now you can uh, have people find you for particular reasons. Right. For particular reasons, as as opposed to another grain of sand on the beach, if it's an industry, uh, oh, you're all the same. Uh, but now maybe uh, we want to be known as a practice that has a very high number of five-star Google reviews. Right. And so now when people, th th you know, where do a lot of people go today to research their uh, purchasing decisions for anything? They go to Google. Google. How they look at Google reviews. Google reviews has become a um, kind of a, a ver we used to have, a, uh, what was it? Uh, consumers guides you know, that would give us reviews on different things, uh, different right. products. Mm -hmm. um, and, and now we have Google reviews. Um, so, you know, if your patients come to you because they're seeking you out, maybe you're known as a very gentle dentist in terms of the way you take care of patients. Uh, maybe you have a niche within this. Maybe you're a more a holistically based practice. Maybe you're more cosmetic based practice. That would indicate that you're a little bit more on the, uh, on the relationship driven side of the practice. Uh, so I wanted to do this, uh, and this podcast episode today to open a debate with our listeners on is dentistry a profession or is it an industry? I'm going to go on record as telling all of you that I believe that it is an industry. Uh, excuse me. I believe it is a profession. I I, I got twisted up of reading the title. Uh, <laughs> I think I insurance, insurance companies have too much of an influence on you too. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is a profession. I think the amazing work that you and your team members do to serve your patients, to serve your team, to serve your community, absolutely qualifies you as as calling yourself part of a profession. And I believe that the words that we use are important. And I would like to politely suggest that uh, uh, together we all start referring to what we do as being part of a profession rather than being part of an industry. Eh, some of you may think it's semantics, but I think it's a lot more than that. Um, and do that exercise. Draw that horizontal line. Uh, put transaction on one side, relationship driven on the other. Uh, draw a line where you think you are. Draw a line where you'd like to be and talk about what you need to do to get there. Um, and if you'd like help with that, uh, we are accepting new clients. Uh, one of my greatest joys is uh, helping doctors successfully resign from PPO plans. If you'd like more help, if you'd like help with that, um, uh, schedule a coaching strategy meeting with me. You can go to thrivingdentist.com forward slash CSM. Uh, that'll be a Zoom meeting with me. It opens up my calendar. Pick a time that works for you. It'll be an hour meeting. Purpose of that meeting is for me to learn about you and your practice uh, and for you to learn about our coaching and determine if there might be a good fit to work together. Um, you know, there's enough time yet this year at the time that we're recording this, Naren, there's enough time this year for any of our li listeners uh, to significantly reduce their insurance uh, dependence before the end of the year and possibly even go all the way to fee for service before the end of the year successfully. There's enough time to do that. Just go to thrivingdentist.com forward slash CSM. And if you'd like help with marketing, Naren and his team is at the ready uh, to help you attract patients uh, from some other way than finding you on the insurance company website. Uh, you can schedule a marketing strategy meeting um, with uh, their team, with Equa. Uh, Naren, what uh, URL do you like to use for that? Yes, the URL I think um, I would like to use for that is equa.com slash LID ekwa.com slash lid and that'll allow them to schedule a marketing strategy meeting with you or with your with 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 someone you're from absolutely yeah well uh as we wrap up this today uh thank you uh for the privilege of your time hope i've given you something to think about today uh and we look forward to connecting with you on the next less insurance dependence podcast 